So this is the wall we're dealing with and we're going to talk about sponge floor plastering today. And the reason this is important in this situation is because we've got a layer of different backgrounds. We've got existing leading into an area that I patched in in a previous video. This is hard wall and basically it's got a lot higher suction this area. Now the reason sponge floating is good is one, it gives you a consistent finish, but two, the area is dry in different times. I'm going to explain all of that in today's video, but first off, let's apply the plaster. Nothing new here, starting at top left, working in. So we're just going to apply left to right for now. Now what I find when I'm applying plaster, Try and go as wide as I can on a horizontal, then blend it in with a vertical. Again, I'll show you what I mean. So again, left to right though is a general rule of thumb. If you are right-handed, we're just going to get this plaster on the wall. Now, the other secret here is I've mixed up a big batch and I'm going to use two coats with the same mix. Now, there's a reason for that. And again, we're going to go into it in a minute. But basically, that is how we're working. We're going to use one big mix, I'm going to apply two coats of plaster with it. Now this wall's been PVA'd, it's all been um, sealed, which is not the issue. The issue is the different backgrounds we're working on. So we're leading from existing into the hard wall. And what we might find is that this area might end up drying a bit faster than the existing wall. I know he's worked with plaster before and worked with a porous plaster like hard wall knows that it dries a lot faster than if, if you're plastering it onto an existing background. But what we're going to do is get a tight coat on, get it as flat as possible. And the sponge float is going to help us get the wall flatter overall whilst giving us a bit more workability. And the general rule of thumb is I like to put a thicker layer of plaster from working on a backing plaster like hard wall. It just gives you a bit more time and it allows a bit more plaster to sit in the grooves. And what we're going to use now is use a spatula to flatten off with. Now this is a Rafina, it doesn't matter which one you use. I'm still trialling this out, so I've been testing it for around a month. A good bit of kit, we'll talk about it in another video. What we're going to do is just use this to get the wall flat as we can. Now there's going to be two coats of plaster to this process. So all I want to do is simply really get the wall as flat as possible. Now it's at this point you'll realise whether the hard wall is pulling in or not. We're actually all right, I've kept the suction and I've managed to apply the right amount of PVA. I've applied two layers of thick PVA to this wall and it's, it's not pulling in, so we're all good there. So we're going to do is give it a quick flatten horizontally and then vertically. Now, like I said, we're going to speed this process up. I've mixed the big batch up. I'm going to give that a few minutes. I'm going to apply another wall on another room and then we're going to use the same mix to apply the second coat of plaster. There's nothing new here, there's nothing new to this process that you haven't done before. I've applied the first coat, applied it to the top, so the second coat, and we're just applying the second now. So big strokes for applying the plaster, and like I said, don't be stingy with it. You want a fairly substantial base to work on. So I'm just trialing up. Again, you can do it in two separate mixes. You don't need to do what I'm doing here. You can mix up two separate mixes for each coat. I just like to use the same mix of plastic because it speeds the process up a bit. And I find you can get away with it with a sponge float and you don't have to find, worry about it going off too fast because we are going to get it back, as I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm just going to finish applying the plaster to this wall here. And then, after that, that's when everything changes. So this is where everything changes. We've got the two coats applied and it's been flattened once with the spatula, the second coat has. Now, what I used to do with the old sponge float, and I used to flatten it a bit more until it was semi-dry and then we'd start the sponge float process. What we're gonna do now is get it whilst it's still green. Now it is firming up, don't get me wrong. And the reason I like to do two coats 
with one mix is because in terms of timings, once you've applied a second coat and you've cleaned up your tools, this is now a good time to use a sponge float. What we're gonna do here is save energy. We've saved the mixing process because we've only mixed one batch up. And what we're gonna do here is get rid of any lines and ripples that were left behind. Got one of these, this is a little hand pressure sprayer. Now, only cheap bit of kit, it's actually a park side one. <laughs> got one of these, this is a sponge float. What we're gonna do is apply a light mist to the wall. We don't wanna go too crazy, just a light mist. We're just moistening it up a little bit. Now, because it's still quite green, there's a bit of moisture in there, we don't need to go crazy. We're literally just doing a little mist. And then put your float flat to the wall. And then what we're gonna do, circular motions, just gonna create a texture. Now, what this is doing, this is getting rid of any of the ripples in the wall, and this is gonna flatten the plaster that we've applied. Now again, float flat to the wall, as if you were ruling floating render, and we're just gonna figure eight motions, do the sponge. Now, I'm gonna talk about dry bits in a minute. If you get any, any dry sections, just give it another spray. What we don't want is to drag. We need it to have this texture. And what it's gonna do, once you put your finger around it, you can create and give it a bit of movement. Now, again, you're probably thinking, why are you adding another element to the plastic? Now, what you're gonna see later on in this video is the end result you're left with is truly amazing and you get flat walls. So I'm gonna finish that little section now. Now using my standard base trowel, this is my carbon steel Nella trowel. I used to use flexi trowels for this. This is something else that I've changed. But what I've come to realize is, even at this stage, we're still flattening the plaster. We will need to use a trowel that's rigid and firm. Now you can use your spatula. I just like to use the close grip of a trowel. Now I now do it straight away. So once I've sponged it, let's trowel it off. And now look, all that texture that was left behind, it's finally nicely troweling out. You can see there's no pressure, there's no issue on the joints. Texture, this is from the sponging. And then when you trowel it, left with a nice smooth patch. So literally, again, left to right, just trowel it out, the areas that we've just done. And again, it's literally effortless. It's nice, there's no pressure on the joints. It's just troweling out really nicely. The word of warning is don't wait too long to trowel out the ripples because if they set, you'll struggle really hard to get them out. So what I like to do is sections at a time. I do the top first. That's what I did on this wall. I did the top first and then I work at the bottom three quarters of the wall because that's in reaching distance. That way, if you dissect it, split it into sections, there's no chance of that texture setting and ruining your walls because if it does set, you won't get it out. It will ruin it. So that's why I like to trowel it pretty much straight away. Now I've stopped short on this section for a reason. This is where the hard wall was applied. What I will say is, if you don't put enough water on, you'll find that the sponge float drags. It's quite stiff. So what you need to do is just gauge it. I know with the hard wall, you've got to apply a bit more water because that area is set. Now this is the reason why sponge floating is good for the multiple backgrounds because it does help with the setting time of plaster. If you have an area that's set completely or an area that's been stubborn, you know the sponge float method that you can soak it back up and you can get results. This is the reason why it's so good to have in your arsenal of tools in plastering because you might have a bit of plaster that's set beyond repair spray a load of water on it, sponge it up, and then you've saved yourself. But not only that, I find it's generally a great way to plaster. So I'm gonna do this section here, and I'm gonna talk about the drawbacks of doing this. One of the downsides of this is quite messy. There's a lot of cleaning up, and the sponge floats always seem to fall apart. So, you know, the clean up process is really annoying, to be honest. <laughs> it's probably the bit I hate the most. You can get sponge boys, which is basically tile sponge cleaners. You can get them if you have been, if you decide to commit. Um, so the only resistance for me is the fact that the extra work involved is enough sometimes to put me off. But the finish is amazing, what you'll see in a minute. So now I'm gonna flatten off where we left off. So it's been about 15, 20 minutes since we last sponged. What you're gonna find, still quite green. You might need a little bit of water in the corners, but not much. 
I'm going to refrain from using too much moisture now because what we've done, we've already used the moisture to kind of smooth out the plaster and start again. What we don't want to do is saturate it with water. That's where they say the issues are with sponge floating. And that's why, just so you know, British Gypsum won't guarantee this plaster if you've sponge floated. So if you are willing to do it, at least have that in the back of your mind. I'll just let you know I've never had any issues, never had any callbacks when I've done it. It's always been good as gold, but it's always good to tell you both sides. So then, smoothing out, what you're going to find is it leaves a nice finish, a nice texture, and it's very flat. There's no pressure on the joints, because you've took all that work away. The plaster's still quite smooth and nice to work with, and it is just trialling off lovely. Now what you can get sometimes when working on different areas, you can get air pockets and say in your bonding and your hard wall. This sponge floating gets rid of that because what you essentially do is give yourself a clean canvas. So if you are getting a lot of pockets, air pockets when you say you're working on plaster, bonding, hard wall, this is a great way to get rid of them. And it's a great way just to get your plaster nice and flat again. When you're doing this, make sure there's lots of lights in the room because that'll make sure it'll highlight all the ripples and all the textures left behind. Again, you need to make sure all of them are troweled out. When this dries, you're gonna get a very consistent finish. Now, I don't fully understand why it does it, but when plaster dries without the sponge float you get, you can see all the grains, you can see the dark colors, see all the ripples. When this dries, you're just left with a texture that's all the same, all the colour looks the same, and it is truly a lovely finish. And I'm not being vain, but I like my plaster to look as good as possible for the customer. It gets me more work, and it means that the overall finish is better. Everything after this point is the same. We're going to flatten using the trowel, and we're going to just finish the same process, the exact same as what we'd do. What I'm going to show you at the end of this is the results, and you'll be quite amazed. So. Like I said, we've probably got two more flattens after this. I've got one more after this flatten, and then I'm going to finish with the Plazi Flex, which I'll show you right now. Now, here's a tip if your sponge flow is falling apart, which it probably will, trust me, <laughs> I've got a screw in there. This would be the equivalent to the wet trowel in standard plastering. But again, we don't need to add a lot of water to it. This is the joy of this process. And in terms of moisture, it's still kind of sitting there. So the last thing you want to do is keep soaking up the wall. It's just going to take the plaster forever to dry. If it's pulling, feel free to do a wet trowel, feel free to use water. But I like to just add a bit to the edges. And I always like to do a cross trowel, edge to edge but it really doesn't need that strained full flow of water. So we literally just use it a little bit on the edges and that is really enough. I'll do this. Now you could also use a flexi trial at this part of the process. I am personally sticking to my carbon steel. Um, I've spoken about it in some of the videos. I'm pretty much using this all the way through plastering at the moment. So. If you want to keep it simple, just stick to your base trial. You don't need any flexes, more than welcome just to use this all the way through. Now literally the last process. This has literally been five minutes. I to be honest, it was about three minutes since I did the wet trial on this one. You don't have to wait to finish with the Plaza Flex. This is a plastic trial. This is what it's gonna mat down the wall and give you that nice matte finish. So again, just literally trial in from the edges. Finishing off with a cross trowel. Again, I like to do an even amount of cross trowels to vertical trowels. And that is the full process done and dusted. That is it. Now, this process has literally taken it's about two hours, 20 minutes. Now, generally, you've got to allow about two and a half hours. And um, this is an existing wall, so it's going to suck in a bit faster. But if you allow two and a half hours for this process, it's not long at all. 
So in terms of timings, it's the exact same as traditional. It's easy on the joints and in my opinion, you're getting a better finish. Now at the beginning of the video, I said I'd provide more information on how to patch plaster. Now this video here on the left is gonna show you a complete guide on how to not only quickly show you how to patch plaster, but show you the materials to use, the exact process on how to do it, and show you foolproof way on how to make sure those cracks in your walls will never appear ever again. So click that video on the left to find that out now, and click that on the right to subscribe.